Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Season 5, Episode 2 of the Rink Moose Hockey Podcast. An episodic fo- podcast where two, sometimes three, t- sometimes four, sometimes five, sometimes more good friends gather around a table or a bar or a hot tub or a restaurant or a bedroom and discuss all things <laughs> NHL and their implications in the fantasy hockey universe. I am one of your hosts, as always, Nick Costew. Pleased to be joined today by... He's finally back, folks. The K-Man himself, Kyle Nice, has made his return to the show. Kyle, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday night as you don your Jonathan Drouin jersey? Oh, God. Yeah, you know what? I'm still waiting on the heat gun from Home Depot to take this Drouin jersey uh, off my Montreal, so... Uh, I'm doing good, Nick. Uh, it's good to be back in the saddle here. I know you guys did that uh, other episode and just felt felt wrong, you know, knowing it that did. The show eh? Did it feel on. weird? It did. Yeah. Did it, it feel did. weird tuning in and Michael's voice is on instead of yours? Did that yeah, bother yeah. you? Yeah. You know what? And I didn't have the heart to listen to it all to rip apart the takes, but uh, ah. it was uh, it was it was interesting. But we're we're back in the saddle, and uh, yeah, it's been a while, as you know, especially for me. And uh, I don't know if you addressed this last time, but now that I'm back on the air in 2022, I've got to address and take a quick nod to the the cup champions. And most importantly, someone has to make Nicholas Costu answer for his sins. So I for want you Tampa. To, I want you to address the quote. I've never been so sure of anything in my <laughs> life. I want you to just address that statement that you made. <laughs> Well, uh, what, what was going on when what when it all fell apart for you? Were you happy? Were you sad? What happened? No, I, I, listen. I think I think uh, I was speaking more from a from passion than an actual intellect standpoint. And I I let I let my passion get the best of me. My my passion for the Lightning, the defending two time champions, John Cooper, the magic that that was that run. And I, I kind of just let that get the best of me. And, and as I was watching that final unfold, I couldn't help but cheer for Colorado because I think they were the better team. They deserved to win. It, and I think they had the better character, you know, which is something we've always uh, trumpeted on this show. And, and, and Joe listening, is turning in his grave. <laughs> Joe is turning in his grave. But listening to all those interviews post game, you know, uh, Bowen Byram, uh, Eric Johnson, all those good Canadian boys giving their interviews post game and, and just hearing the hearing all the stories they had was just incredible. And I just it was way more of an exciting thing to watch than had Tampa just won their third championship in a row. So I'm actually incredibly happy with how that season turned out. I think it was one of the best playoffs we've ever had in a long time. Mm. And uh and I hope we have a similar cup final this year. I think something like that would be fantastic. And I am now, like, I'm sold on Colorado, you know? I always thought they couldn't get it done. I always thought they didn't have the defense, but I'm sold on them. That's why I drafted Georgiev this year. I think they're legit. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 have, I wish them the best, and I congratulate them. So that's, my, that's all I got to say there on my, on my awful prediction. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, no, it definitely, yeah, it looked like they had definitely suffered a lot to get to where they were, which I think is... Uh, is the key to a, to a good win. But what I want to ask you just quickly before we move on from from that is uh, based on Colorado's win, what does this do for your kind of winning blueprint idea? Like, does this totally change or add to what a winning blueprint of a team means? I I don't think so because you know they I st- <laughs> they still had the Nor. I think you always need the Norris defenseman, right? Yeah, and they had it. They had it with flying colors. In fact, I had a wager. Not only did they have the Norris defenseman, they had the best pairing, the best single defense pairing in the entire league with yeah. Devon Taves and Kill McCarr. In the playoffs, if those guys are playing thir- almost thirty minutes, which is half the game, and that's only that you have the best pairing in the NHL for half the game, I like your chances. And that's what Colorado had during their cup run, you know. And then I think, you know, I still think those quintessential playoff things you know those grinders I, th- I still think they had that your Coglianos mm-hmm. your Comfers they, they they had that Val Nachushkin they had depth scoring you know uh, th- that came in handy with Nachushkin and Burakovsky 
Um, and then, of course, you know, the yeah, the, the big number one center in Nathan McKinnon. So I, I think they d- I think that they fit the mold perfectly. I don't think it changes anything. Um, really, I mean, the goaltender was was good enough. And I, I think we've seen other goalies do that in the past, like, uh, you know, Antti Niemi in, in Chicago. We've seen that mold done before. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I was, I, I, the, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't stand out as too, uh, too much of a revelation, you know, but you're the fan. What, you're the Colorado fan. What did you think? No, yeah, I agree with everything you said. The, uh, the main thing that sticks out for me is the, is the goaltending. I think this, this yeah. is now kind of proving as long as you've got those pieces that you mentioned, um, you don't have to have that star studded goaltender. Um, I mean, let's be honest, uh, Kemper was, was, he was good. He was solid, mm-hmm. but there was also many nights where he looked, uh, pretty shaky. He, he mm-hmm. was, he was an average goalie for them in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so that proved it didn't matter because they only lost four games total, which is just mm-hmm. mind blowing to me. Um, mm-hmm. and obviously they believe in that in getting a guy like Georgiev who, you know, he's never been a number one guy, but if all they need him to be at is average, then he should do the job once again. So it's oh, yeah, different. He's been I mean, great. It, it's different from Tampa's formula for sure. I mean, Tampa had, you know, there's a couple stars up front, really great gut grinders, but sometimes most of the time their best player was their goalie. And he definitely won them some series, won them some games. So it's a different, uh, it's a different look, but um, I mean, the other thing is the underlying uh, theme is speed. Speed and skill, all those things you said are true with an element of speed and skill yes, throughout. Yes, you're right. Throughout. The speed and skill, I think, would be the newest addition to the fray, right? Like, you look at St. Louis, they didn't have that. You know, L.A., yeah. they didn't have that. And historically, those have been the teams that I put my money on. You know, that's probably mm-hmm. why I had Tampa. They were the slower team in that series. They looked oh, yeah. so old. They looked yeah. so old in that series. And and then the speed and skill of Colorado just got the best of them, and especially on the back end, you know mm-hmm. I think that's where it shows. You don't need those big brooding big six D like St. Louis had. You know your your Edmondsons and your Petrangelos and your Bowmeisters. That's kind of the old way. The new way is let's have these slick skating puck movers like Bo Byram and Kale McCarr. And I know Sammy Gerrard was injured, but you know he, he all season he was that for them. Um, I, I think it's this new mold of defensemen that they had. And mm-hmm. I think that's why guys like Dubis are looking at their D and going, yeah, well, we can do that too. Uh, albeit, I think their D pales in comparison to Colorado's. But we'll get into that later. Oh, we will, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that, that pretty well wraps yeah. it up on Colorado. No, yeah, no, you're true. I mean, a shame on Michael and I for not, because uh, I, I didn't even realize we probably didn't do an end-of-the-season show last year. Mm, no. Um. So 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 we got to give them their due, you know, and mm-hmm. especially you, given you're the big Colorado fan. So, shame on Michael and I. Um. But we keep on keeping on. Um. Let's start with the. Uh, let's start with uh, who to this point? Which teams? I know you said you know new and improved teams. Which teams so far this year? We're now about I don't know a month in. I believe we started the season early o- October. It's November ninth. As I look at my calendar now, what teams to this point have both surprised you from a from a from a, uh, a positive standpoint, and which ones have rubbed you the wrong way from a negative standpoint? Yeah, I think well, right off the bat, on the positive side is is got to be New Jersey. Like they're yeah. they're ten and three. They're at the top of the metro, and uh, despite losing a guy like Blackwood, I mean they've just some people call them the fastest team in the league which is just crazy. And, and guys like Jack Hughes are playing well, but they're not tearing it up. You know who's really been really been breaking out is Nico Heischer, who's got just a whack ton a of Nick, points. A Nick pickup. If you picked him up in Wink. fantasy, you yeah. fucking nailed it, right? I got him I got him when he was 20, like 29% owned. Now he's 62% owned. Yeah, yeah. So guys like that are crazy. And it's, it's not even Jack Hughes. You got Jesper Brad is looking great. Um I don't know. Like the the question is, can they keep this up? And uh, I'm gonna say they've got some of those elements that we talked about, Nick. The speed, the skill, two really good centers. They got uh, pretty good, pretty good defense. Um, in in Dougie Hamilton, 
I don't think it's going to be quite top of the Metro, but uh, yeah, they Hell could no. be sniffing around wild card. No, and, and, and listen, this if you listen to the show <laughs> last week, I mean, th- that's that, that that's what we had. I mean, I had this team fifth, fifth in that division, just on the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. So I I had them above Islanders, Blue Jackets, um, and uh, who who's the other kind of contender there? Um, uh, oh, um, Philly, um, Philly. Rangers I I thought Philly? they I thought they I thought they would be better than Blue Jackets, <clears throat> Philly. Islanders and and, uh, and 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 I've had them fifth there, and yeah. uh, and and Michael Michael disagreed. I think he had them like seventh, and oh. I told him, listen, listen, man, this team's legit. Like a healthy Heischer, a healthy Hughes, um, a new and improved defense with guys like John Marino, who you love from Pittsburgh. Oh, he's very. I solid. bet they wish they still had him, and oh, uh, wow. and 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 the the goaltending. They got the Vanacek guy from from Washington, and he seems to have taken the reins there with the Blackwood injury. So uh I think I think they're 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 like, you look at I know we're not analytic guys, but you look at every single analytic thing out there. This team is performing like every single statistic, goals expected, goals against expected, they're top ten, top five in every category. So wow. and, and and last year they were tier but they weren't getting the saves. At least now they're getting the saves and that's why you see they're 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 ten and three. Yeah. Yeah, um, interesting team. Interesting team. Um, probably the biggest one for me, top, top, top of the list, is uh, is Philly. Philly okay. sitting in the wild card spot, seven, three, and two. You look at the roster; it's awful. It's just simply awful. They were so bad last year. They have uh, John Tortorella now, which apparently does wonders for a struggling team. It's so bad for the rebuild, which they absolutely should be in. But my God, like. These forwards are all no-names. These defensemen, I mean, you have Tony D'Angelo on your top pair. Um, and I guess Carter Hart has come come back with a vengeance. It's just, I thought they'd be in the bottom three of the league. Like, way, way down there. But Philly is just shocking me with, you know, I guess they've got the hard work, the work ethic. And my goodness, this one blows me away. Blows me away. And, and honestly, I, I read a statistic the other day. It was like... If there's any team that after this month is due to just decline dramatically, it's Philly. Because if you look at every single number out there, mm-hmm. supposedly for two thirds of the game, they don't even have the puck. They're winning games without having the for they only have the puck for thirty three percent of the game and they're winning with this record of theirs. It's incredible. It's incredible, but it's not sustainable. This goalie staying on his head, I I, I can't possibly see how they keep this up. Well, yeah, you saying that, it's just another tip of the cap to Carter Hart. And I di- I have it, seen it's all one Carter or two. Hart. Yeah, I've seen one or two Philly games, and he was he's he was fantastic when I watched mm-hmm. them. Um, and I don't think he played the Leafs that night that they played. Uh, no, they played he didn't. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Carter, like, good, good he's for him. He's the next Carey Price. He, he just, yeah. He's in line to be the next Price. You know what? I'd love to know what John Tortorella said to him to 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 get his mind right because mm-hmm. last year everything was going in, and he's yeah. a, he's a talented guy, but his his brain was messed up, right? Yeah, um, I'd love to know what he said in the room. So, because he, he like it's not it's not just the defense and the systems and all that, but he's yeah. making some it's amazing. Not. Saves. It's not. It's not like that's the thing. I don't want people giving Tortorella credit where where credit's yeah. not due. He's not a wizard. He's not doing anything different there. It's just this goalie standing on his head. That's why I think they're due for a bad uh, you know, uh <laughs> bit here. Yeah. But 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 we'll see. Uh my surprise team, these guys. Oh, this come beautiful on. jersey I'm wearing. Um eight four and two. The Seattle Kraken are second place in the Pacific Division. Uh yeah, yeah, they've won pretty. they've won five in a row. And they smacked Nashville five one last night. What the hell is going on in Seattle? Yeah, I. I you don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like you, you're not. You, well, you're not staying late enough to watch these games, are absolutely you? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely. Not. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's Shane Wright. Uh, it's no, no. It's not. And we'll get to him. We'll get to him. It's it's the it's the, all of a sudden this scoring resurgence. This team last year was the team that couldn't score. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, no one respected them. They had no scoring because when you when when you have an expansion draft team, you're only drafting bottom six forwards. You know, 
And you might get yeah. lucky with a guy like Eberly and a guy like Yanni Gord, but that's about it. And they couldn't score. And this year, they've just, with the emergence of Berniers, with the addition of Burakovsky, with the addition of Wenberg, it's just, they now have legit lines, top to bottom, three scoring mm-hmm. lines. They're getting scoring from the first, the second, the third, the fourth line, all the way down. Yeah. Like, your, thir- your third line is Yanni Gord and Tanev. Like, that's that's solid, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then Matty Berniers looks like a superstar. Like, you see yeah. the guy, and he, he just looks so comfortable. It's crazy. For a guy second year in the league, he looks like he's a seven-year veteran, you know? Mm. It, it's incredible, the way he skates, his presence on the ice. Um, and then they're actually getting pretty solid goaltending. I've always been not a Martin Jones fan. I think he's dog shit, and I think he's going to regress. <laughs> but he's pitching good games for them right now, you know? And they're playing yeah. really structured. I've watched all like a lot of their games. They play a lot of structure. That Hackstall has them has them playing really smart, and uh, they're just they're just playing solid, effective hockey right now. And it's 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 incredible to watch. Second place in the Pacific Division, Seattle Kraken. I spot started Vladar of Calgary, thinking surely they can't score on Calgary, the best defense in the NHL. Mm. Wrong. Mm, I got lit yeah. up for five goals. Yeah. Yeah. So they stuck it to me. Wow. It's very much by committee they're doing it, though, yeah? Seattle? Yep, it's all committee. It's all committee. There's no one guy. Like, you look at their best fantasy player, you'd be hard-pressed to find him, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like I believe it's like Bernier. They got, like, Bernier's on a line with, uh, like, Bernier's is on their first line. Burakovsky's on their second line. Um, I think I think, you know, Wenberg's playing with one of them. And then you got you got I think Eberly's with Burakovsky, um, and 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 it's just it's just it's really well spread out offense, and uh, and then you know you got your puck movers, you got your Vince Duns of the world on the back end, you got your uh, you know Sh- Justin Schultz is on the back end, uh, Jamie Alexiak, you know they're solid. So I don't again I think they will regress. I don't I didn't have them making the playoffs. I think I had them like sixth in that division, but um, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. What do you think? You think they're they're gonna go down, or do, or do you think they can make the playoffs because that division is frankly so shit? No, I mean, you know what? Um, let me just look at the division here. The the Pacific because because McGuire McGuire on the radio the other day said this is the shittiest division in hockey, and it's not even close. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs. To be honest. Um, but like, oh boy, you'd you'd have to ask like who who would come up and and unseat them, exactly. And like, do you believe in Vancouver? Do you believe in no? I, L.A. I I I I think Vancouver's a better team than Seattle, and L.A. I don't trust at all. Mm-hmm. So, but I I I I would have said L.A. is a better team than Seattle as well. So. Mm-hmm. I think Vancouver's going to come back and kind of sniff around a wild card. So, you know what? Maybe Seattle gets uh, gets to sneak in there. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Ah, Minnesota's in the central. So, okay, so Minnesota will definitely be occupying one of the wild card spots. You'd think Nashville's going to come back into the fold here. St. Louis mm-hmm. has got to come back into the fold. So, Seattle's got to get into that um, into that wild card race. Because mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to be top. They have to be top three in the Pacific or nothing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that they got a shot to do that. They got a shot to do that. I don't know n- enough about them, um, but I I do think that Vancouver is going to come back and uh, make a bit of a stink. Oh, Amber Alert! Yeah, I got the same one too. Interrupting the show. How dare they? A <laughs> uh, couple more teams. I want to throw this one to you. Uh, the emergence of the Buffalo Sabers. Uh, oh, you yeah, made the you made quite the prediction the other night when they beat Pittsburgh uh, in a game they hosted, uh, where they came back and beat Pittsburgh in that game from a deficit. I think they were down like three goals or something. You said they would make the playoffs. Um, yeah. As someone who has not watched a single Buffalo game this year, I know they've lost three in a row since. So, so maybe that prediction's in jeopardy. But, uh, but you predicted it. So, so make your case. Why is Buffalo? Why is this team different? And why is this team making the playoffs? You being someone who's watched these games. 
Yeah, you know what they 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 just have a bit of a swagger to them. For like, Darlene is one guy who's uh, obviously come into his own this year, and he's kind of led the charge there. So he's kind of given everyone else a bit more confidence. Ch- Tage Thompson has come in and been, you know, he kind of silenced all the all the doubters on that contract. He's been awesome. Paterka has been a really nice rookie for them. Cousins is a little bit better. Alex Tuck is is fantastic as usual. Um, they've got that kind of, you know, in a rebuild when things are starting to swing, the pendulum starts to swing when all of a sudden we've got some established guys and now we've got some young talent that's performing uh, mm-hmm. and things start to click. It's It's like mm-hmm. that first year that Toronto made the playoffs. Um, it's starting to feel like that a little bit. That the energy's really high, um, and and the guys are just they they seem to be really dialed in. They seem to be confident. Uh, I do stick by my prediction. I think they're going to uh, to make some noise all the way through. You have Kyle Ocposo as a captain there, which I think is a, is an interesting pick. A guy lower lower down in the lineup who's uh, who's leading the team, um, and it's the just, captain. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? It's one of those. It's one of those stories. Like it's it's one of those things you really pull for. Like for example, I, I think they're going to be. They have a great chance of being ahead of Philly, as we talked about. I think Washington can come down and stay down, um, and then get teams like the Islanders will will settle back down. I think they're going to be right in that fight, and I think Detroit's going to come down and and fight with that uh, with those the Buffaloes of the world as well. And uh, to be honest, I, I like a team like Buffalo more than a team like Detroit too. I just think they're um, they're a bit farther along. And then if they get do get close to a playoff spot, you know they can always add as well. And they've got guys like like Power looks at times really lost Owen Power, but then at times you're like, wow, this guy he's 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 dominant as as a second power play kind of quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's like, wow, this guy he's he's legit. He gets lost a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like defensively, he <laughs> he's got really, some figuring eh? out to do. Yeah, really? yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of yeah. unforced errors. Yeah, yeah. Like you'll you'll notice him do some pretty boneheaded wow. stuff. Owen Power in his own end. Yeah, but uh, interesting. But then he'll just show that little flash of what we saw at the juniors. That uh, amazing mm-hmm. patience, mm-hmm. and uh, and once those kind of couple of plays click, then you're like, holy shit! There's there's something here. There, wow. There's definitely something here, and then you've got Jack Quinn. You know he's 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 gotten off to a slow start, but uh, when he pops, my goodness, he's, they they got another scorer there. Um, yeah, they they're just they're they're ready to to take the next step, and I think they're going to be competitive all year. Hmm. Interesting. They're, well, they may not be top three in the division, but uh, wild card, yeah, they'll be sniffing. They'll be wow. sniffing around. Well, hey, I, I heard Jeff Merrick on 32 Thoughts. He said, Darlene, to this point, has been the best defenseman in the NHL. I would and agree. And that got my attention. I mean, listen, they're, 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 um, they're like 8th or ninth in the, in the East right now, but they have a 538 winning percentage. Mm-hmm. So they're still, they still have a really good percentage, and they're plus mm-hmm. 8 on their differential. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they've lost three in a row, but... Um, they're uh, they're they're a great team. They're a great team, and they surprised me because I thought Ottawa would maybe be mm-hmm. more Oof, so in that struggled. position, but they just yeah they're they're a weird one, man. They they're they're a bit disappointing. They're a bit disappointing. I, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong there. I haven't been tuning into as many games, admittedly, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, they got some stuff to figure out. My goodness, yeah, tough loss to Vancouver last night, six four. Joe was chirping them, sending me chirps about Ottawa. Yeah, me um, too. How, how Ryan Reynolds will not be able to save them. Can Ryan Reynolds lift them up from disgrace, Kyle? Honestly, yes. Can one man, can Deadpool, can Deadpool <laughs> literally change the fortunes of the Ottawa Senators? I think so. I think it's a great move. What's he going to do? You, you think he's going to sit in a boardroom with Pierre Dorian and make personnel decisions? Deadpool? No, no, no. He's just going to, he's going to, he's a, he's a reasonably smart guy. Like when you have an <laughs> owner who's young, you know, and he's like, he, he's not going to try to fucking get his fingers all in the, in the pie like that. He's an actor. He's not like a business guy. He's not like, oh, I run six companies. He's an actor. He knows his role. He knows his, his position. He's going to just let Dorian do his thing for once. Uh-huh. It's uh-huh. gonna be great, and we we and get to have that? some funny guy running an like owning an NHL team. It's amazing, right? Right, and finally he can get that arena 
issue dealt with. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they're an interesting group. And then, uh, and then last, I think good team before we get to some more of the bad, um, tomorrow night, actually relating to Buffalo, Vegas will be visiting Buffalo. Jack Eichel's second return. We all know what happened. His first return. He had that funny interview after, I'm sure you're going to, you're going to get another one of those interviews tomorrow. If they lose, I bet. Um, but yeah, Vegas rolls into Buffalo tomorrow. They're, they've won seven in a row now, uh, or maybe even it's eight now after last night. They beat Toronto in overtime. Um, Jack Eichel having a having a solid year. I mean, I know you, you wanted to talk about his resurgence quite a bit. As someone who's tuned in for a few more of their games, you know, I think it's more than just Eichel. I think it's more of a collective kind of unit. You know, Eichel, six goals, nine points, um, you know, through... Uh, through 14 contests so far so you know that's that's uh you know that's 15 points in 14 games i don't think he's been playing incredibly well you know Mm -hmm. i i just think they're getting scoring from anyone uh, everywhere you know like uh like uh like a um a march so you know he's got 10 points a chandler stevenson he's got 11 points Mm -hmm. mark stone that's now a line stone stevenson eichel that's kind of their power line so to speak Mm-hmm. Um, they're get you know Riley Smith had two goals, the two most important goals last night, the tying goal, the game winning goal. Carlson's getting points. It's very spread out there. Nick Waugh. Um, so I I don't think this is a, a team you know like the Rangers where you see like Panarin and 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 Zibanejad just you know ahead of everyone else. I really yeah. think this is a team where you have every line is contributing and that's why they are where they are right now. It's not that Eichel's been this superstar like he was in Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. Like stat, it's just um, based on what I've seen, it's nice to see Eichel up to his old tricks again, you know, with, with some of the highlight goals and, you know, he just looks like I'm, I'm glad he's found his, um, he's back to being a star player, you know, like we didn't, we didn't know that would ever be a thing again. And uh, I think it's good for the league. And obviously, it's very, very good for Vegas. So um, that's great. That's great uh, that they're doing well. You know, I'm not a fan of Vegas personally, but they're running away with the division. Like, if they keep this kind of pace up for a little bit longer, they have, they will have run away with it, especially with the rest of the Pacific being so dog water. And uh, and that's great. That's, and that's and great here's the them. here's the most exciting part, and this this is what gets Nick hard: two point one four goals against average. <laughs> Number one in the league, Kyle. Vegas Golden Knights. Wow, that defense. Shea it's Theodore. not no, Kyle. The goaltending. No. Who who's Aiden Hill? Who's Logan Thompson? Well, now I. How know, are those right? two goalies? How are those two goalies with the best goals against in the league? It is quite surprising. Does that yeah. sound like a Jennings Trophy duo to you? No, no. But uh, you sent me that little Logan Thompson bio history. Do you read that? And that was quite interesting. He was an Uber Eats driver driving yeah. up hills, uh, Winter Hills, and in, in, in fucking Sudbury. And yeah. now he's uh, and now he's backstopping the Golden Knights to the Jennings Trophy. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. At least For, went to Brock to... University sports management. Dropped out after one year. Incredible. You know what? I'll tell you this. Thank God they got a guy like that with with a good story because yeah because the, uh, they needed the, it the poor leadership and and the poor karma that this team has yeah like uh, that's the only thing keeping these guys going I, I would yeah. say with with Eichel there you know what they're top of the division right now but it might not last this is Jack Eichel we're talking he's never made the playoffs he's mm-hmm. never made the playoffs. You know, he's the Toronto, he's the Toronto know, Maple Leafs I know, of the first round. But, it, but again, you look at that division and it's like, who's going to eclipse them? You know, I, I know Calgary was the leading contender going in, but they're sputtering. Calgary's been awful. They can't win a game. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're shocked. <laughs> you know, that's where, that's where I was going to go next. And as far as struggling teams, Calgary, they're so bad that Daryl Sutter is making shit jokes about Jonathan Huberdeau. <laughs> I don't think that was a joke, man. That that wasn't a joke. Like he was no. pissed. He's like, instead of scoring goals, instead of putting up 115 points a year, he's being shorzy and he's taking shits all the way through the game. <laughs> oh my shit! That's so true, man. It's That's true. So I think true. I think I think Elliot Friedman nailed it. He's like, everyone thought he was joking in that moment. He wasn't joking. Like he's not smiling in that clip. 
No. He's no. not. He's not. He's serious as hell, and he's like, he was taking a shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like no one got it. No, no. Yeah, that's the funny thing is that he was so serious, and it to me, it, I knew it was serious right off the hop. Like that was, uh, that was an all time quote, and I don't think it's going to be topped all year. So, <laughs> and and, and we you got know, it early. W- we'll get into this later because I wanted to go over our fantasy duds and our superstars, but. I mean, Jonathan Huberto, look no further if you're looking for a dud. 11 games in, he's got one goal in one goal in 11 games. And then yeah, and then and then yeah. and then and then Devil's Advocate would go, "Oh, but he's a passer. Huberto's a passer." Well, he's only got 5 assists in 11 games. So, I don't know about that one either, Chief. <laughs> yeah, you know it's what? It's a shit. It's a shit. It's a shit pick. It's crazy, and I know uh, Matt, Matt Kachuk's been doing pretty darn good. Although both Very good. teams, both teams have have been not themselves. Like it doesn't look like that trade is working for either. I I was telling Michael on the show last week. I think Calgary won the trade, but I think uh, like long term. But I think Florida got the best player in the deal, and 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 Michael said Huberto's the best player in the deal. I said you're full of shit. Uh. I think Huberto's the best player. I think Kachuk is the most impactful. He's got player. the intangible. He's got the intangibles. Yeah, he he he's the most impactful. It's the weird thing. Like you're you're tempted to say, oh, Daryl Sutter doesn't allow superstars to exist and that kind of thing. But they had that super line last year, so that yeah, argument's out the year. window. So Kuchar why that? Uh, yeah, why that isn't working now? Who knows? Maybe it's a regression thing. Maybe we're just waiting for things to get normalized and for them to be great again. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird one for sure. They'll be better. We know they will. It's just... They've lost it, six in a, a row. Start. They've lost six in a row, and they're, and they're a whole dozen points behind Vegas. Yeah. Twelve points behind Vegas. That's the problem. Vegas is winning seven in a row. Calgary loses seven in a row. The race is already done like like a month into the season. Shocking. Okay, so to put put that in perspective, the two teams nipping at Calgary's heels are Chicago with the same amount of points, same record, and Arizona with one point behind. Sh- yeah, one point behind is Arizona. Yeah, they've been a pleasant surprise. Those what the items. hell is going on out here? Very pleasant surprise. Um, other team that's sputtering. I want your take on these guys. I have not watched their games. Pittsburgh's Penguins, losers oh, yeah. of seven in a row. <laughs> Yeah, what the what hell, is going man? on? What's what? wrong? I mean, is Cros like this is supposed to be Crosby's year? What's going on? They started well, and now they've fallen off. Well, I'm going to pump the brakes on on anything negative. About oh, this and 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 one more thing, one more thing. Uh, uh, guys who are doing shit in fantasy, and and I'm sure you're eating shit for this one, Kyle. Chris Letang ranked 364. Oh yeah, in fantasy. Poof. Yeah, well, you know what? He's he's one of those reasons that this team has been so so putrid as of late. Oh, they they started the year, Nick, the top of the league. They started the year with like f- the first five games or so. They were top of the league. They looked amazing, and I'm like, wow, this is the year, right? Um, Crosby's been fine. Gensel has had some um, some injury troubles. He he was away for probably the majority of those of this losing skid, and. Um, other than that, like the the goaltending has been subpar. That Latang has been the biggest sore spot here. Like, not only is he not producing, but he's like he he looks like his effort is is missing at times. It's it, it's a weird look for him, uh, and they're gonna have to figure that out. Malkin's been he's been okay, um, but the the main question, Nick, which I can't quite answer, is is what's going on in the room there, because. You can look at the product on the ice all day long. You'd think that the the character and the leadership in that room would be able to right the ship. The the, the coaching there would be able to right the ship. Uh, and sometimes they're losing in, in dramatic fashion too. So it, it's confusing. I think there's more to the story that we just don't know about. There's got to be something going on behind the scenes because uh, this team is just not – not like this you know they're just not this is the first time in the whole Crosby era they've lost that many games in a row hmm. and uh and I think it was like seven games in a row hmm. so my prediction stands with them I think they're going to be really great they're gonna, obviously going to come out of this tailspin but uh my goodness like they need more out of Latang. and you know what the biggest problem I had with them 
I, I don't know what's, what's going on with this, but they had ties. They, they traded for Ty Smith and, uh, you know, they got rid of Marino and, and whatnot. Ty Smith looked absolutely incredible in, in the preseason. Like he was easily their best defenseman. They didn't even give him a sniff in the NHL, which I don't understand. He's doing really great in the AHL. I'm like, why don't you have this guy up? Like, especially if Latang's going to struggle, you want to maybe take a look at Ty Smith on power play two. Petrie's not that kind of guy on power play two. He's he's not a power play guy. What what do no, we do? No, they they here? had him playing in Latang's spot when Latang was injured there briefly. It's yeah, it's silly. Like just call up your offensive defenseman who's already put up numbers in the AHL or sorry in the NHL. It it doesn't make any sense to me. But this is a uh, it's, it's concerning for sure. Um. But man, oh man, like it—it it almost feels like um, what they need is is for like a, a big heroic win from like a one of the stars, and it just it hasn't come yet. So it um, it is it's it's a little concerning, but uh, I think they'll come out of it. Yeah, man, I don't know oh what man, they need. There's got to be uh, something I, going on there. There's something going no. on. Do they need a Brian Burke speech in the dressing room? Like I don't know. Something's got to give. They but must. Uh, they must. it's not a good look. And, and as I said, I can't really comment because I'm not watching these games. They play the Leafs on Friday. I think that'll be a good one. You know, the Leafs are obviously rolling now after after struggling after the Marner nonsense in Anaheim. Uh, they 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 took five of six points against Vegas, uh, Calgary and uh, and um, or sorry, Ve- Vegas, Carolina and uh, Boston. And they looked really good doing it. Uh, so uh, that's going to be a really tough test. Pittsburgh in Toronto Friday night. Yeah, fuck. Um, any other teams we haven't spoken about? Because that's uh, that's really all I have there. Uh, you know what? We touched on Ottawa there. We, you you might even just graze over the Rangers. They, uh, they're they out of the wild card spot for now. Their record isn't so bad. Um, it's just they're one of those teams you thought would be kind of on the even even higher than last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll be they'll be fine. They're again they're an agonizing team to watch. It's it's probably easily the the team I've watched the most this year so far. Agonizing to watch. It's it's just it's putrid. Their five on five play is disgusting. Uh, their power play is amazing. Their goal is amazing. Their power play is disgusting. No, I mean like their five on five play is terrible. Sorry, I should have clarified yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's terrible to watch. They're I don't. F- it's the worst hockey you can watch is Rangers hockey. And then they'll just get a power play and score and the goalie will make 6,000 saves. It sucks to watch. And I, I don't, I hope they actually don't make the playoffs, but um, yeah, that's, that's the Rangers. They're a bit surprising down there. And then uh, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Winnipeg's doing really well, you know? Yeah. Then you, well, I, I talked about best goals against being uh uh, Vegas. Guess who's number two? It's the Winnipeg Jets. Really, two point one seven goals against per game. That's why they brought that bonus in there apparently to fix their defensive structure. And wow. uh, look at it, Houdini. He's got them with a two point one seven GAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. And you know um, what? Uh, we'd yeah. be remiss to 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 not. You know, this is going to be a, a, a every show segment, but we're going to take a look at the race for the draft. Obviously, the draft lottery. Mm-hmm. That's going to be something we watch. So right now at the top of the list is Columbus is in last. They're followed by St. Louis. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, and then Ottawa, San Jose, and yeah. Pittsburgh. I mean, that's that's one we got to touch. I mean, St. Louis. I mean, I, I had him not in the playoffs. Mike had him in. I had him out. And I've been on this. You you got to you got to give me credit where the credits due. And they lost Petrangelo. I said this team this team's not going to. This is the ter- start of the bad days, the dark days. And uh, sure enough, they've been awful. Bennington's getting into fights with Sorokin. You know, the guy's what a sore loser. The guy's, loser, the, guy, the, guy's, the guy's shouldering other goalies when he's losing in hockey games. You know, yeah. Ryan O'Reilly, a guy who's in a contract year, who needs to produce for the sake of his well-being, his future, his income, has, has two goals uh, in, in, in 12 games, two goals, zero assists. Uh, Ry- Ryan O'Reilly does not have an assist in 12 games. Wow. No way. Yep. 12 games, zero assists. How's that possible? I swear to God, like Nico Heischer is the new Orion O'Reilly. 
you know? Wow. Like, he, he's, Nico Heischer's going to put up 70 points. He's going to have great playoff runs. Maybe he'll win a Conn Smythe. And, uh, and Ryan O'Reilly is, like, going down, you know? Wow. He shares the new O'Reilly, I'm calling So it. O'Reilly's done, in your opinion. He's done. Done, done, done. Come I on. saw it last year. I had him. I drafted him last year. Remember how happy I was to have Ryan O'Reilly and Mark Stone on the same team? And it blew up in my face. Hmm. Blew up in my face. The guy's he's ranked 675 in Yahoo. I believe uh, Andrew Bell drafted him, and he's eating shit for it now. Fuck. Um, so, yeah, that's a team to watch. Uh, don't be surprised if that coach there, Baruvi's on the hot seat. He might be the first to go. So keep yeah. tabs on that one. Um, okay, uh, speaking of hot, cold, who's doing well, who's not doing well, uh, let's move to a more individual standpoint. Fantasy. Uh, any guys you want to shout out? Doing really well, doing very poor, that we haven't touched on yet. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's it's got to start with Marty Nikas. Ah, this guy, this guy's unbelievable. And and you know what? It was uh, it was you know I I kind of figured out I've I've got this formula for for predicting or or kind of taking a look at uh, players' breakouts. He's he's got the pedigree, you know. He's he's been in the league long enough. He's got the opportunity with with the line deployment. Uh, and he's got the skill set. He passes the eye test. And he's just been so fantastic. He's got a .58 goal pace and a .83 assist pace. And three shots on goal a game. Great on the power play. This guy's clicking with Svechnikov. He's, 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 he's the real deal. And, and his highlights speak for themselves. He's, he was a fantastic pickup for myself personally. And uh, and I think it's going to continue based on you know like I said his pedigree he's been in the league long enough the skills there teams there he's he's a great one to to forty sixth in Yahoo right now seven goals ten assists <clears throat> the big thing for me is um, you know in Carolina you watch their power play it's always been a really good power play you know last year it was D'Angelo Aho Svechnikov uh, and Tara Vinen kind of leading them it looks like Tara Vinen is on the way out. Marty Nikas is on the way in. Tara Vinen, he's not on that power play, and Tara Vinen has had an awful year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look, no. look, it, it's, you, it, it's it, that 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 to me is the story. It's it's one guy has replaced the other. You know, Nikas 46 in fantasy, 17 points. Tavo Tara Vinen, 379th in Yahoo, zero goals, five assists. Wow. And this guy, this guy Kyle, had had uh, had sixty five points last year, twenty two goals, forty three assists. He had thirty one power play points last year. Jeez. And he has zero this year. Wow. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know if he's not in the gr- good graces of Rod Brindabor anymore. I have no idea. But uh, not going so well for him. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Ahead, um, uh, go ahead with one. Well, hey, I mean Rasmus Dalin, we touched on him earlier. I mean he's got he's he's eighth ranked in Yahoo. He's got uh eighteen points from the back end. Uh but speaking of another guy on the back end, a uh, pickup of mine, the resurgence of Eric Carlson in San Jose. What a story. Mm-hmm. This guy and and not only is he playing well on the like the, okay, on the ice, he's doing great things. Everyone saw the overtime winner against the Leafs. Wasn't that vintage Carlson there, Kyle? It was, yeah. Intercepting the pass, breakaway, stumbles on the post when he scores, um, yeah, like w- yeah. like it was classic, classic. He's got ten goals. Eric Carlson, I read the stat the other day. He has never had over twenty one goals in a in a season. Okay, this guy's won like two Norris trophies. He's never had over twenty one goals. He's already got half of that through twelve games. That's ridiculous. What's going uh, on? So what, was he not trying the rest of the years? Like previous I think years? he was hurt, Kyle. I think he was hurt. Yeah. You know, he was always in and out of the lineup. He was always hurt. And then don't forget, Brett Burns. You know, that was always the guy on the top power play in San Jose taking all the shots from the point, right? Brett Burns yeah. is gone. Eric Carlson yeah. in. Eric Carlson healthy. It, that team is dog shit. And yet that guy is putting the team on his back defensively and offensively. And then not only that, Kyle, like he's 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 legit on the ice. Off the ice, he's caught that Carlson swagger back, too. Did you see that interview with Sean McKenzie? Yeah, that was a weird one, though. That Wasn't was, that funny? That was Yeah, that was a bit weird. 
That was awesome. Yeah, but that's a swagger, you know? He's got a swagger to him, you know? Yeah. Like, I miss that Eric Carlson, and we got to see that. So I think he's he's playing well on the ice, and it's making him feel good off the ice. And that guy is that guy's been legit so far, full value. Um, a guy we chirped, we gave Michael shit for keeping this guy, Vinny Trocek, uh, 18th ranked in Yahoo. Um, he's doing he's doing pretty good there. He's fit in like a glove on that top power play. Um, you know, I'm gonna give myself credit for this. Logan Thompson again. We talked about him. 2.12 goals against, 3.30 save percentage. He's good enough. That's good enough for 17th ranked in Yahoo. Um, I'll give you credit. Uh, Allmark looks to have won the goalie duel there in Boston. You picked him up off waivers. Yeah, Swayman, in- eh? yeah, well, to, well, well, to hedge my bets. Yeah, I mean, it, g- good to have both those guys being Boston being such a good team this year, and 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 Swayman now being injured. This guy's carrying their team. Two hundred five GAA, nine thirty two save percentage. He's killing it. Um, yeah. You know, another goalie of mine. Was doing. He was the Vezina Trophy winner to this point without getting injured. Jake Ottinger, one point four zero GAA, nine fifty two save percentage. All of that in the course of six games. Um, so that that's pretty impressive. Um, I'll hand it over back to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you uh, like Val Nachushkin in there. I know he's injured right now, and yep. he, uh, he's one of your guys. But he's, you know, on average, he's the fourth ranked uh, fantasy player. He's got a goal a game and a point seven one. He's crazy on the power play. He was doing great. I mean, he was, he was just blowing the league monster. Open. You, and the way he's scoring too, like it's not just oh looking God. at the numbers. It's it's watching the game and seeing how strong he is, but also how fast he is. You know. Yeah. Like you don't see guys like that often. I I now see why when he was in Dallas, people were looking at him going, "Wow, this guy could be the real deal." Yeah. And he never really got to that point with them, and that's why they traded him. But now in Colorado, the guy's just fucking. You see why they wanted to re-sign him so bad, and they they why they let Burakovsky walk, and why they kept him. Yeah, yeah. Power crazy. play, penalty kill, like he does everything. Yeah, and like you said, that the big thing is he he looks the part. Like it, I I don't like getting smoke screened by these stats yeah. if it just look looks like he's just tapping in pucks. But he absolutely looks the part, and he's gonna stick with McKinnon. And man, oh man, what a what a find for Colorado! Like how'd they get this guy for nothing? No, for like, nothing. What the hell? I, you gotta I gotta read up on this deal. I don't know how Joe Sakic pulled it off, but latest with him, unfortunately, he will be going. Uh, he will be undergoing ankle surgery. Um, he's going to miss one month. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I've stashed him in the IR, um, but we'll see how that one ages. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's been great. Anyone else there, Kyle? Billy Huso has been really good too. Uh, the the goalie in Detroit. He's been, he's been a, a, a top, top fantasy goalie there. And, uh, and I guess you should mention since we're on Detroit is, is Kubalik who stepped in, uh, in the absence of, of Tyler Bertuzzi. And he's well over a point per game. I definitely expect him to drop down once Bertuzzi comes back into the lineup. But uh, this is a guy, you know, he's he's done it before. He's had thirty goals before in his career, and he's he's right at that kind of mark in his in his in his career where he should be starting to show show himself. So he plays this well. I think he's earned like a, a, a extended look on that top power play because. Man, oh man, he's right in on the offense. And again, he's one of those guys who he looks like he's scoring. Like pretty goals too. Like he's he's mm-hmm. he's a good player. He's a really good player. And then obviously we mentioned Carter Hart um, earlier on. Uh, he's been obviously a stud as well. Um, a guy I want to ask you about because seemingly all the highlights of this team I watch, this guy's always getting damage done. Uh, Tage Thompson on Buffalo. Oh, this guy's a weapon. This guy oh looks de- like we talking about Val Nichushkin, like big imposing guys on the ice who you notice but they're all so quick and they score. This guy fits that mold too. Nick, like I'd, guy, I'd be scared to go up against him. Th- this guy, he's, he's, he, he's, he's so good. It makes you think why the hell, where yeah. was he? And where wh- was why he? Didn't anybody identify this skill set? Well, like, he was really be- good. No, he was really good in St. Louis when, you know, when I was really following that team closely, he was, he w- you could see the potential. I just didn't think he'd get this good this quick. Yeah, yeah, he's like sometimes he goes out there and he simply does whatever he wants. He's absolutely massive. He's got great hands, a crazy shot. 
He's the whole package. He's he's an ideal, really top of the flight, top flight, top line center. Like this, again, the whole bu- Buffalo is exciting is because they found this guy. They traded for this guy. He had a great year, and now it, he's proven now in this year that he's legit. And that uh, it's amazing. Like I, I, with his contract and all that, I would take him over many, mm-hmm. many, many, many top centers in this league. It, it's like what's really he making? Seven mil a year? Something like that. Yeah, seven, seven or eight. Seven yeah. or eight. Let me look it up for the official number. Yeah, I remember. I think it was around, along the lines of seven, and everyone was giving that Ketam Adams shit at the time. And 7. now the guy's one. Yeah, now the guy's looking like a genius, that Kevin Adams. It's ridiculous. That's a crazy contract. It's, for it's this incredible. Kind of fucking play. It's, yeah. What that what that guy has done in two years is the GM of Buffalo. You know, uh, uh, making that signing, trading. Uh, uh, you know, tr- making the Eichel deal, getting Tuck, getting Krebs, uh, drafting some of the guys he's drafted. Uh, very very good work by there by that Kedem Adams. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. This, um, yeah. They're 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 finally getting run right, which is just yeah. awesome to see. Um, but this this I'm guy sell, he's gonna sell tickets too. Like he's exciting. Give me him over Austin Matthews with contracts all that considered. Like, no, come on. And like I watch Buffalo highlights, and this guy's like this guy's scoring a great one timer goal every game, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's getting tiring. I'm like, who is this guy? It's ridiculous. It's uh yeah, it's a little egregious. Okay, uh guys who are kind of struggling. Uh Roman Yossi, ranked two twenty seven in Yahoo. So this is a guy who, you know, he's going one, two, three, four, five, top five D. He's probably going in the first three rounds in the ten man league. Ranked yeah. two twenty he's ranked two twenty seven. He's only got two goals and five assists. Yeah, crazy. Can't really comment. Haven't watched their games, but he's been dog shit. Um Matt Duchesne, a guy who guys, dummies like Andrew were going, oh, 43 goals last I year know. for Matt Duchesne. I know, I know. Surely this can't go wrong. No, no, he's he's 248 in Yahoo. He's only got, he's only got three goals this year. Uh, that's not going to cut it. Um, we talked about Huberto earlier. He's not really getting it done. Um, John Carlson, another good D, you know, his, historically every year. He's only got six points so far. Uh, 262 in Yahoo. You got any uh, other ones there, Kyle, you want to point out? I do, yeah. I, I've got Thomas Shabbat in one of my leagues. He's been, yep. uh, you know, we, you all, we all thought he'd be really great because of all the new talent, but he's been very mediocre, um, just under a half point a game there. Sam Reinhart's obviously been really, really uh, mediocre. He's He's, he's got to step it up. Um, Johnny Hockey, my goodness. Yeah, I was Johnny about to Gattrall. point out that one. I mean, the he's got that team. Uh, shit, that team is so dog shit. Oh my god, are they ever? He's got Colorado slapped them. Assists. They slapped them in both games in Finland. It wasn't even close. I know. I watched a couple of those, and it was <laughs> uh, it was entertaining to say not the least. pretty. What a stupid matchup. Let's put like the best team in the league against the worst team in the league for our two games in Finland. What were they thinking? I know they got the Finnish guys on yeah. both teams, but fuck, that was not good. That's all they wanted was the Finns to come out. And to be <laughs> fair, both both those guys had had a good weekend. Line A and yeah. uh, Rantanen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Johnny Hockey, super disappointing. I don't that marriage between him and Line A hasn't clicked yet. So that's something to watch. Like they're really relying on that to to, mm-hmm. to go go right for them. Um, and then the last guy I'll say is uh, Alexi Lafreniere. <laughs> hmm. Might as well throw that in. He had a really, really good start. And I'll just say this quick. I've watched a lot of the games. He's looked really solid for most of the season. And, and at, at times he just wasn't getting the points. Some guys weren't finishing a lot of posts, a lot of this, a lot of that. But at the end of the day, like it's, there's no excuse for this kind of production. Like you're, you're in your third year now and it, it, it's got to start clicking. Like it's, it's ridiculous. The shot rate, the shot rates are up, but you got to start fucking producing it, it's just maddening it's my god you thought you were there right we thought hey he's arrived and it's like no we're still clicking it at a point three point per game it's just it's exhausting nick i can't keep doing this 
I hey, I, I'm, I hope I just hope for your health that it's not another Jonathan Drouin situation. You know, I know because what am I going to look like? If that's, that's your two, case. that's your two guys who have literally like led your hockey life, and that yeah. would just be such a such a joke. Yeah. Um, couple other names. Um, you know, some bad goalies. Um, Markstrom obviously mm. has not been very good for Calgary as as that team hasn't been very good. Um, you know, just he's, he's not getting it done. You draft a guy like him, you expect to get elite elite splits because here I am thinking, oh, best defense in the league, Daryl Sutter. No, 297 GAA, 893 save percentage, 394 in Yahoo. Mark Andre Fleury on Minnesota. That's another team oh. that's not doing too hot. Michael's slamming his head against a wall every night. Yeah. Um, 317 GAA, 896 save percentage for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, stats like that, these guys are like top 10 goalies. They're getting drafted. Markstrom, in his case, like <coughs> top three goalie. And and those splits, they're, they're, just, mm-hmm. they're just not good enough for that juncture of the draft, you know? Mi- yeah, um, Minnesota's kind of surprised me. I, whew, I, this one's I even know. worse. UC Soros, 572 in Yahoo. He's got a 346 GAA, Ooh. 892 save percentage. That's a Josh Schechter pick. And that yeah. one's not do that one's not doing too hot right about now. Oh, and I love this one. This one's great. Jack Campbell. No. He oh, called no. his performance the other day pathetic. They asked him, "What do what do you think of your game?" He said, "Frankly, I've been pathetic." Wow. And and what does pathetic mean? You might ask. Three ninety three goals against average, almost four goals per game. 884 save percentage. Oh that's over God. the course. That's not over two games. That's over seven games. Oh, man. That he let six. He let six in against Dallas the other night. One goal went through his glove. I saw he literally that, yeah. st- he stuck his glove, went through the glove. Boom. Yeah. And that's it's a guy pretty. I was kind of looking at in fantasy. Like, I, I think I want to draft this guy. And I just yep. didn't get the chance. Yeah, <laughs> and now so he's not lucky. even the starter. You can make an argue that that Skinner guy is the yeah. starter, which is which is just incredible. What a turn of fortune there! I know, crazy, um, crazy. And lastly, my worst pick of the fantasy draft. You want to guess this one, Kyle? Let me just take a quick look here. <laughs> oh yeah, Shane Wright, of course. Yeah, my <laughs> yeah. Although it was in the nineteenth round, so you wow. can't really blame me there. Shane yeah. Wright with a measly one assist. On the year one that he didn't even earn, I might no. add. No, a, a, a little defl- a little deflection where he broke up a pass in the defensive zone ends up getting him his first assist. Brought his dad to tears. What an embarrassing moment for Shane Wright. Yeah, yeah. And Speaking then he's whining. Which... And then he's whining the next game because they scratch him when his dad, his his grandpa shows up to the game, oh my God. and they, and they scratch Shane Wright, and then he complains. He did. Yeah, he supposedly the the family got really mad at the Kraken for scratching him when his grandpa showed up in a cane. No way. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Like, there's always a story with this guy. That's why I love him. That's why I have his jersey. Well, he's the yeah, he's like he's another enigma, right? He's, he's one <laughs> he really of those is. weirdos. Like. He really is. And uh, yeah, and this is our Shane segment. This is our this is uh, may as well yeah. call this our episodic Shane segment. I mean, I've watched all. I've watched. I don't watch the games. I've told you this. I watch all of his shifts. Um, again, guy, lo- he looks like a guy very much like laugh in his early years. Um, doesn't want to make a mistake, afraid to make a mistake. You know, mm. he, instead of seeing the fun side of him, you know, seeing him free with the puck loose, he's, yeah. he's just afraid to make mistakes. And every time he gets the puck, it's like, it's gone a second later. He's not carrying it. He's not making plays with it. It's what's the smartest astute pass I can make in this situation, you know? Yeah, and and it just gets boring to watch. So uh, that's kind of been the story on him. Um, you know, they typically have him on the fourth line. Recently, he got promoted to the Yanni Gortanov third line. Um, you know, he had his best game just two nights ago against Minnesota. He played yeah. thirteen minutes. He looked pretty good in that game. If you watch some clips, he he looked really? more confident. But then again, the following game, he plays against Pittsburgh, and they mm-hmm. bench him. Uh, fucking um, wow. that 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 guy number sixty seven on their team, uh, that the name eludes me. Geeky, uh, mm-hmm. Geeky replaces him, and he got like benched in the third period. So, 
Um, and he, again, he, I think he, only, he again went back to like eight minutes that game. So every game it's been either like six to eight minutes with the exception of that Minnesota game. So mm. that's kind of my, that's my report. A guy who's afraid to make mistakes, just making the little, little cute, safe play. He's getting knocked down a lot. He's getting hit a lot. He lost his helmet in one game, had to run up back to the bench. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, yeah, that's the extent of the Shane Wright report. But has there been any flashes? No. In any of the shifts you've seen, has he maybe deked a guy or made a pass that wowed he you? Hasn't made a, he hasn't made a single one-on-one deke. Um, on, the, on the power play, they have him playing the half wall. On the second power play, they have him playing the half wall. So sometimes he'll get it and, and do a little behind-the-back pass to the defenseman. Like, it's nothing, it's nothing like... It's like a little, ooh, that was exciting. But, like, it's nothing, like, yeah. really that crazy because he's giving the puck away right away the second he gets it he's giving it away so he's you're not really yeah. seeing him do much wow. um so I, I i gotta say it's very disappointed i'm very glad i'm not watching these games because if i was i'd, I'd be just so disappointed it reminds me of those games where we'd watch all those laugh games I'd, I'd watch every one of those ranger games when i happened in fantasy that year and i was just disappointed every game yeah yeah, exactly. It was like a waste of time. I'd turn off I'd turn off the TV after three hours and go, where did my life go that three hours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So what? what is your projection? For, what's your newfound projection for him? Well, that's the fascinating point, right? It's does he stay, does he go? It sounds like I think it's a given he's going to the World Juniors. I think mm. they'd, be, they'd be foolish not to let him play in that. So he's going to l- miss a good chunk of the season doing that between the camp, the tournament, all of that. Um, he's played eight games. Had he played last night, but he didn't. He got scratched again. It would have been his ninth. So he's at eight right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this turns out here. Um, but I mean, all signs are that he's staying. You know, it sounds like Ronnie That's Francis so wants to. Ronnie Francis wants to keep him. I know. And hey, I you, you heard it from me first. I thought he shouldn't. He shouldn't have been in the league this year. You know, he should have developed yeah. further in Kingston or in Europe. Um, and, uh, his, his, I don't know what it is with these guys. Like, it's like Ronnie Francis doesn't know how to develop players, you know? It's yeah. It's it's like, is it, what is it? Is it, is it like, uh, we need to sell tickets. Like we need to get the fan base excited. So we have to play him. Like, I I don't understand. I don't think Shane Wright's selling it. I don't think he's selling ticket. I don't think Joe Schmo in Seattle is waking up in the morning going, boy, I better go to the game tonight because Shane Wright's in the lineup. (laughs) <laughs> you know no you're right you're i don't get it like i literally do not understand why he's playing it's not selling tickets it's well, hurting his a, development for nick because the team's playing well <laughs> the team is playing really well but he's not he's not he's not contributing in any way Th- they're Zero. winning more games w- they're winning more games with him out of the lineup that's why hackstall's not playing him it's why hackstall's only playing six six to eight minutes a night you, you know what's the most shocking thing on this stat line, Nick? He's a passenger, Kyle. That's what it says. When you're a plus yeah. four, when you are when you only have one point and you're a plus four, that's a passenger. Nick, uh, the most shocking thing I'm seeing is one shot in seven games. Yeah, it, that's, that's what impossible. I'm saying. That's and, and what I'm saying. One, he's he's one giving hit. the puck away. One hit. He's like, giving the puck away. What the hell is going he on get, here? He gets the puck. He gets the puck. He gives it away. This is a broken child. You're right, Kyle. He's played eight games, and he's got one shot on goal. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It, that's, it's a, that's a shocking. stat line. One assist, plus four, one hit, one shot on goal. It's shocking. It's like, I, if you're going to play him, play him. You know, like, if you're going to if you're gonna have him in the NHL, commit. Mm. There's no halfway. It's juniors or NHL, and if he's in the NHL, you play him. You don't play yeah. him six to eight minutes, where it's hurting his confidence, yeah, and and and, and all of that. I'm just I'm so mentally exhausted by this situation. And then on thirty two thoughts on Saturday night, Jeff Merrick's like, <clears throat> yeah, well, here's the report on Shane Wright. All I have to say is that the Kraken and Shane are frustrated. Ron Francis is frustrated. Shane Wright's frustrated. <laughs> Hackstall's frustrated. I'm like, so do something about it. Yeah. Don't seriously. just like, don't just stomp on the floor and go, oh, I'm pissed off. He's not playing well. Do yeah. something about it and send him down. 
or do something about it and play him more and see what he can do, you know? Yeah, yeah. That was such a stupid report. He's like, yeah, they're they're frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, well, do something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's shocking. It is shocking. He's got to so, go back. He's got to go back. I hope he, he goes back. He will go back. He will go back. Well, they got they got but they got to do it in one game. Because otherwise you burn the year, right? But he can play number 9, right? And then that's it? I believe so, yeah. Okay. So like we're at that juncture now. You know, this is it. When do camp start? When do World Junior camp start? December. Yeah, so he's still got a ways to go. They're like you can't just hold him on the you can't just keep him in the press box until the World Junior start, you no, know? No, no. You know what this reminds me of? I'll tell you is is Barrett Hayton. Barrett mm-hmm. Hayton had the same treatment. He was in the NHL doing nothing, absolutely nothing. And then he was in he was basically a, a zero guy in the NHL until he's old enough to be in the AHL and then they buried in the AHL. It mm-hmm. it, it makes no sense. It yeah. makes no sense. And now how is he doing now? Not so good, I'll tell you. And he was so yeah. great at the World Juniors. Like, this guy's going to be a star. Look at the shot. Look at the hands. Mm-hmm. And now he's nothing. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Just send yeah. him and, back. And that's the – yeah. And, I mean, I, I think if there's a saving grace here, it's that, you know, we are going to see him in the World Junior. This is a player who's yet to have a great World Junior. Like, I want to see him have a laugh World Junior, you know? Like, I don't have, think it's to, to, to be a top two forward – to produce, to win, and to have a Canadian flag draped on his back when when they have the trophy at the end. That's Wouldn't what I want to see. I would love to see that. Yeah. But the way his development has gone, how it's stagnated with COVID, how they fucked around with it right now, yeah. I can't. I can't see that. I agree with you. I can't see it, but I want to see it. The pr- the difference is here, Nick, is he's he's not going to come in as like this hot shot. Oh, we we're getting an NHL guy. Like he's going to be below Bedard. He's going to be below Fantilli. He's he's not going to be the top dog like Laugh was. Mm-hmm. So he 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 might even be he might even keep deferring, deferring, deferring like he is right now. Oh, I think he will. I I think I think I think Laugh. You know, there'd be three games where nothing would happen, but then one game we'd have a clip to share between each other, you know? You'd yeah. find a clip or I'd find a clip, and it would be like, wow, like what a pass. Yes, or wow, yes. what what a way to find that guy, you know? Yeah, and, and that's still and, happening. It's still happening. And I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it with this kid. No. And no, no, it's no. very it's very sad, so. I don't know. We got to stop talking about it. I'm just going to get sad. <laughs> we'll talk about the next the next episode. We'll have another segment. You I'm know sure what? The will. worst. Th- one more thing. He, his his bread and butter is a shot. Is it not? Yeah. Just right. Shot. That's that. And <laughs> he's got one shot. One shot. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Right. And it, Corey Corey Pronman. He had one elite thing. Not one thing was elite for Shane Wright. The only elite thing was his shot. Mm. And he's got one shot through eight games. What the yeah. fuck are you doing if you have one shot on goal through eight games? I have no idea. How are you helping the team? I have no Passenger. idea. Passenger. That's all I'm going to say. That's been the word. If there's one word to define his um, his season so far, it's passenger. Wow. Yeah. Very disappointing. Okay. Yeah, no, it's very disappointing. But it's a, it's a killer jersey, and I'm the only guy in Toronto with a Seattle Kraken uh, Shane Wright jersey. And I'm the coolest guy on the street wearing it, so it's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, a uh, couple stories. We're done talking about players and teams. Which one do you want to touch on first? Uh, the Mike Rupp, Austin Matthews video or the Boston signing oh, of uh, Miller? Where are you going here? Um, let's, well, we got to make it uh, speedy, so we'll, we'll get through them pretty quick. But let's do the, let's do Mike Rupp. Okay, so Mike Rupp posts a weird video you never see guys really do this he just posts a video of him basically chirping austin matthews and his behavior in the philly game when there was a scrum at the end of the game konechny got in it konechny tried to get under matthews skins we've all seen it matthews doesn't lay a punch backs off smiles lets his guys do the work for him mark giordano has to come in and throw him to the ground uh, it was quite the kerfuffle and yet another moment where Leaf haters like us, or I'm not going to say Leaf haters, but you know Matthews, Leafs core haters like us, 
mm. um, got to kind of team up on him and bully him. And I think my <laughs> Mike Rupp was kind of the sounding board for us. So yeah, uh, yeah. what did you make of this? I'm sure you woke up and just loved watching this video. Oh, my God. You know how many times I watched that video on repeat? How he, many? What he, what he did was he, he said everything that I've, I've been thinking for the last so many years. And, and I know um, – some pe- some Leafs fans agreed. Some Leafs fans agreed. The, this guy, it, it shows his character's right on display. And Mike Rupp was very careful with his words. He's very careful with his words. He didn't want to say it outright. This is dog shit behavior mm-hmm. by Matthews. Didn't say mm-hmm. any of that. He didn't say, I want you to fight. He didn't say anything like that. He, mm-hmm. didn't say, he didn't say anything really. He said everything very nicely. But what he said was this behavior and this whole cool guy act is not going to go over well in the room long term and that Mm -hmm. is the key it doesn't matter about other teams seeing that he's a bit of a bitch which we know it's your teammates looking at you like you think you're such an Mm all-star it's it's you starting this fight and then having absolutely zero remorse for your team having to clean up your mess not once but twice Mm -hmm. and that to me was just shocking that all these guys the whole i mean it, it was he put it so beautifully mike Rupp, because Everyone on the ice is going, flying all over the place, going into battle. And Matthews couldn't be bothered to move a muscle. He mm-hmm. said the limp pool noodle on the arm. Mm-hmm. Just a little pool noodle for, for the guy he was grabbing. It, it, was, it was absolutely embarrassing. None of the stars, none of the stars that we've seen win cups in the last two decades would, would act like that. You don't see mm-hmm. Kucherov act like that. You don't see Crosby act like that. They don't do that shit. Like, no one does that shit. You're not above any of those guys I just mentioned. Not even fucking close. Stamkos got in a fucking brawl with little little Lafreniere in the playoffs last year. You're, mm. you're so entitled. It's ex- it's, it exemplifies your entitlement that, that plagues this team. That's the problem. That's the main problem I have with this core. They think they're so above doing the little things that need to be done to win. This is one of those things, you know. It's it's getting into the dirty areas. It's it's doing these dirty jobs. And you continue to show that I'm Austin Matthews. I'm the greatest leaf of all time. I don't need to worry bother myself with this shit. So it's just to me it, it's 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 embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And don't give me that shit about oh he had wrist surgery last year. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Sidney Crosby had six concussions. He wouldn't be doing this shit. You think he should be in fucking scuffles like this either? No. But you, you got to do what you have to do. It, it's embarrassing. Absolutely. And you think, fuck, you think Nathan McKinnon would act like this? <laughs> you're, you're, you're dreaming. You're dreaming. You're a loser. This team's going z- nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And, and yeah. for all those people who say, oh, but I'm so proud of how the Leafs acted with all this. Like, look at all the guys coming to his defense. Get fucked you think that matters whatsoever at all like he sets the example this is the focal point this is the leader and they're not going to want to do that for four rounds into the playoffs trust me and you know what this is the game plan if you're playing toronto think about a playoff series this is the game plan this is what i'm doing i'm going after this fucking six foot three 220 pound bitch the whole series if you guys want to clean up the mess every time, see how long they want to do that. It's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love what he. Yeah, he was very honest. He was like, th- he said what you said. They're going nowhere if this is the attitude, you know. Um, yeah. And it's 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 deplorable. Um, but as I said, they've uh, despite this behavior, they're playing very well. Um, everyone was on their back. But I've seen a new Leafs these last three games, and I think they got their mojo back. I had a conversation with Joe yesterday. I was like, "This is you know, every year we're always talking about we don't care about the regular season. Just wait till the playoffs, you know? Who's the matchup? What matchup do you want? Who scares you? <laughs> I don't really care about the matchup this year. That's my take. Like, I'm just like, bring on anyone, you know? Like, I, no one scares me there in the East, you know? I, right. I just I, I, I'm really not fearful of anyone like in that Metro. No one scares me. And then you saw how they fought Tampa last year. Like, I don't know. Maybe if there's a team that scares me, it's Boston just because like Bergeron and Marshawn always have it out for them, you know. Yeah. But then if you watch that game Saturday night, 
they dummied Boston. Like, those guys got no looks. Like, th- I didn't notice Dick from any of those guys. Marshawn, Bergeron, Pasternak, that was maybe their most quietest game against the Leafs ever. They mm. played that to perfection. Following night, everyone's counting them out against Carolina. Surely they're going to lose on a back-to-back with Schalgren and Ned against Carolina. Those bloodthirsty Hurricanes. Nope. They, like, like fucking ne- ne- William Nylander scores a fluky goal there at the end. Skates by Slavin. Little poke check past Freddie Anderson, who seemingly sucks every game he plays the Leafs. <laughs> and, and they pull off a crazy upset in Carolina. And then this past Tuesday, I know they lost, and thank God they did because I, I put fifty bucks on Vegas to win that game. So I was wow. sweating. I was I was sweating hard when they were down three two. When well, that when when, Mar- that when Marner made that beautiful pass to um, to Lilligren on that goal, I was sweating buckets. I was swearing profanities. Um, but then uh, but then when they came back and won the game, I was like, yeah, I just won fifty bucks. So uh, so that was great, but but they looked great. You know, I think they deserve to win that game. That's my point. So I think, you know, the Matthews behavior aside, it, it will kick them in the rear end in the playoffs. I'm sure it will. But still, I got to give them credit where credit's due. I counted them out against that California trip. It, for, mm-hmm. for Leaf haters like us, it was probably the best seven-day stretch ever. But um, they backed it up with these three games. They are the Jekyll and Hyde of any in t- any team in professional sports, you know? I've never yeah, seen a yeah. team duck their heads so low to, to bad competition like Arizona and San Jose mm-hmm. and then just rate to be a completely different team against these elite teams, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just fascinating. a lack of professionalism. I think so. I think it speaks to that, doesn't it? Like oh, yeah. It it's sleeping to. on it your opponent, to. not respecting your opponent, taking games for granted, mm-hmm. thinking you're going to have an easy night in this league. Easy nights do not exist in this league. If mm. you're sleeping, you're going to get fucked, you know? Mm. And and they got fucked by Arizona <laughs> and San Jose, and it's going to keep happening against like ag- until it happens again, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like Joe, Joe last night was like when we were talking playoff matchup, he's like I just don't want to be the favorite. Like I don't want to play another Columbus because yeah. I know we're fucked. Because of yeah. this conversation yeah. we're having, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. he's like, give me Tampa, give me Boston. Do not give me New Jersey. Do not give me Ottawa. Do not give me Buffalo. You know, <laughs> that's fair. That's a fair measured take. So, 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 hey, I, I get him. But, uh, but yeah, anyways, that's the leaf. That's mm. our, that's our two cents on the Leafs. Uh, lastly, uh, you know, probably the most recent news, but we got to get to it. Uh, you can touch on this to whatever extent you want. The Mitchell Miller signing. I know this is something we talked about on the show. We covered it a couple of years ago, and then all of a sudden it resurfaced here over the weekend with Boston signing the guy. Um, pretty deplorable behavior on the part of their management, don't you think? Yeah, just an embarrassing, shocking turn of events. Uh, you know what? It's a bit more confusing than we initially thought because originally the NHL said they weren't uh, – they weren't uh, contacted before making the signing. And then they just made the signing. And then Gary Bettman says, hey, the guy's not NHL eligible. So I don't know why you did this. But the group in Boston says, hey, we we contacted Bill Daly before we made the signing. Otherwise, that's how we signed the contract was to contact the NHL, obviously. So it's a little bit of he said, she said, which is a little bit strange if you ask me. Like, who's, who's, who's fibbing here? So the NHL obviously allowed the contract to be signed. Boston obviously thought this guy might have been an NHL player in order to sign him. And yet, Batman comes out after the fact and says, hey, this guy can't play. So it's just an overall just an embarrassing situation on all parts. And uh, my God, they couldn't sweep this under the rug quick enough because this is just... Like, is it really worth it for this guy who might be what? Like, what might he be? Yeah, how good could he be? He If he's to not going to be a top two guy on your team. If he's not McDavid, it's not worth it. No. You know? it's so like, ridiculous. literally, the entire reputation of your franchise is is gone to shit, gone to the toilet because of this guy. And he's not even McDavid, not even close to McDavid good. And I'll tell you what, you want to know why Boston 
got dummied on Saturday and the stars didn't show up, it's because they were all to a T in interviews saying, I'm disappointed with the franchise. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't blame them for not being very motivated to, to buck up against Toronto. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was a tough, so it was, it a, was fluke. a tough week. It was a fluke. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a tough week in Boston. No credit. No credit. And I don't know if Leafs. you saw that Bergeron interview where he, he addressed that. And yeah, and I, I read things. about it. I read about it. My goodness. That is just, that is the quintessential character in this league. The quintess. if you want to build a culture on a team, like, pluck a guy onto your roster to just simply build culture that's your guy yeah above anybody else that is your guy to build a culture and i think that for, uh yeah for, he's for gonna me have a job t- in this yeah. league even after he oh, retires yeah. for many 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 years no huge shout out to him but to me it all just falls on that cam neely guy like <laughs> i just don't get it like he when they ask him why you signed it he's like oh we don't have we didn't have information we didn't have enough information like, if you listen to the Rink Boost podcast two years ago and the things we said this kid made this other kid do and the and the and the words he called him oh is that not enough information? He's such he's so full of shit. It's such he? it's such like spinball. Like it's the worst bullshit I've ever heard of. The excuses he was giving. Why are you Oh, he didn't apologize. We didn't know we, we didn't know he didn't apologize. It doesn't matter if he didn't apologize. You you just you could I don't care who that guy is. He could be like Jesus. But if that's where he came from, if that's what he if that's what he did, he doesn't deserve a second chance, you know? No, no. Let him play somewhere else. Don't make this an NHL problem, you know? And poor kid because now that kid who had that experience is dragged back into this. The family is dragged back into this, you know? Yeah, we didn't talk about we didn't talk about this story for two years, and now it's resurfaced with a rage because Boston thought, "Geez, maybe this depth signing can help our third line in the playoffs." Mm, Just give me a fucking break. Just you know, and you'd think that a a, a franchise like this. I hate this franchise. I hate this team. (laughs) Awful. Yeah, yeah. Awful. I know we love Bergeron, but come on. It's How could you root for this team after that? Well, until the mani- until the manager until that manager is gone, this yeah. team is like this team's deplorable to me. Wow, that's a big. But it, it is. About, it the, is. The players are separate from the manager. I don't care that that manager he will hoist the cup if they yeah, win. Yeah, true. So true. why should you cheer for him to hoist the cup? You're right. After this decision. You know, you're right. right. It's awful. Yeah. Anyway, that that goes right up to the owner, too. They had to they probably owner. Yeah. Owner GM. That's what I'm saying. And those guys aren't going anywhere. Like Bergeron's going to retire at the end of this year. And those guys are still going to be there, probably. And I'm going to be like, well, fuck this franchise. You know what sucks is that this was supposed to be their feel good Cinderella year. And now they've done something like this. They fucked it up. People will forget about it, but it does sully the waters a little bit. Which is a shame. It's awful. It's awful. It's a real shame. Um, okay, last up, uh, very last thing, Kyle. Got to get your thoughts on your boy, your Colorado fan, uh, play-by-play commentator Peter McNabb lost his fight against cancer over the weekend, passes away. Thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family. Thoughts, memories, Peter McNabb. Peter McNabb, just uh, just a classic Colorado guy, just uh, just a legend in the city. Um, it's it's a loss for everybody. They mentioned it on the broadcast, and they they had a good little moment for him. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, it sucks. Thoughts and prayers to his family, and uh, you know it uh, it'll never be the same. What a duo, Mojer and McNabb. It won't be the yeah. same. I like. I love Mojer. Mojer adds so much, and he's probably he's he's the of the two guys. He brought the more he brought more excitement to the yeah. to the broadcast, you know. But 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 I thought they just worked really well together, you know. For sure. Like like you got to have a guy who will tolerate Mojer's, you know, attitude and his 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 bombastic personality. And I mm. thought McNabb he played into it, you know. If Mojer was going like. 
oh, Mc- McKinnon is, is is punching this guy's guts, you know? Like, <laughs> like, like if he was saying something like that, like McNabb would rally behind him, you know? Yes, yes. He wouldn't, he wouldn't yeah. make Mojer seem like a loser and call yeah. him out. And because I love you, that. You couldn't, you couldn't announce like that if you had like a, like a Mike Johnson as, no. as your analyst, you know? You just couldn't no. do it. It, it, it no. wouldn't feel right. Or even no. even a Ray Ferraro, you couldn't do that. They're with. too professional. Yeah, and, like and, he, and I just yeah, for sure. With with those smaller like the local broadcasts, you have to work as a, like symbiotic with each other, and and they did that. Uh, and they were my favorite broadcasts for like I, I think oh yeah, I could safely say they're the most entertaining broadcasts. No, it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough shoes to fill. Sorry, I gotta plug in this computer, or else it's gonna die. Um, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, tough shoes to fill for sure. Um, I think they'll be hard pressed to find someone um, as uh, as 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 good as him. Um, yeah, hold on. Yeah, so no, there you have it. Uh, that's basically all I have, Kyle. Unless you have anything to add, uh, that just about does it here for se- uh, episode two of season five. No, yeah, I was just gonna say uh, Kirby Doc. He looks like he's having a great year. This guy. Who Chicago gave away for nothing, right? Yeah, he's Doc th- and uh, and Monahan hasn't been too shabby, eh? Yeah, he's got uh, Doc's up to like eleven points in in thirteen, fourteen games. And he's he looks good on that top line. My goodness. Yeah. So quite good, good the, for uh, him. And he and he's 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 a big guy, so he'll he'll probably break out later in his in his career. But uh, my goodness, it's looking pretty good for him. Good, 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 solid pickup by the uh, by the crew there. Kent absolutely Hughes. absolutely okay well uh thanks for tuning in this week all uh pleasure to serve you yet again uh hope you keep on keeping on enjoy the rest of the season as we go on and uh we look forward to you tuning all to our third episode in a few weeks time so until then have a good week everyone thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to serve you good night Beep, beep.